Laura, 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 I can look at you, girl, and tell you got your whole life together. You's a good, wholesome woman. I can look at you and tell this. But why you ain't grab your boys up? Why you ain't have a whole talk with Jaleel and Darius McCrary? And it's Jaleel White fighting the case. Oh, <laughs> And with that note, we back at it. Actually, no, Jalil's uh, just recently got married. So actually, he's doing very well for himself right now. And that's just one of the topics we're going to, you know, talk about. That's a major topic. But again, um, this is my last video. I'm done with it all. I'm done with it. You know, so we're going to talk about, you know, the part two. This is the part two, but also the end. We're going to talk about some real sensitive, serious, you know, topics with Family Matters, man. And we're going to close the chapter. We're going to close the season, you know, on Family Matters. So let's get to it. What to do it. This is one of the big situations, Darius, you know, and a certain person and, you know, the, the, uh, their inter, their, the intermingling, if that's how you say it. Okay. The, my thought is, is a couple things. One, I always found it interesting that we want to judge people based on their personal life. We want to make opinions on them based on, you know what I'm saying? They personal business. That kind of, that's interesting to me. I just think it's interesting because if they weren't famous, we wouldn't even know because that's what, you know what I'm saying? That's what the, the, the newspapers and the, and the people want to do. They need stories. So they're going to go and get these stories and, and, and tell us the story, how they want us to know it. You know what I'm saying? So I always thought it was interesting that we judge people that way. Secondly, I would say the Bible says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. You know, we want to go and throw stones at, at, you know, at people and at these celebrities, you know, and hey, let's go ahead and talk about this one too while we at it. The whole Diddy uh, um, call Winslow situation. Y'all know what it is, right? It's in the same boat for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I care more about, uh, the soul than I do the situation. You know what I'm saying? And I think we we're so quick to judge, you know, a person on their personal life. And we don't know that we don't know. We don't know what happened between Diddy and Carl. We don't know what happened between, you know, Darius and, and, and his friend here. We, 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 we know based on what the media has told us, but we don't know. So again, I will say he who is without sin cast the first stone, you know, and here's the other thing. I know people are like, hold on, I'm gonna get to it. But I know people are just like, you, you sound like you're making excuses. You a Christian. You are supposed to da, 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 da. Proverbs 18 and 13, right? It says spouting off before listening to, to the facts is both shameful and foolish, right? Let's read it again. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. I'm just giving y'all what the Bible says. When I look at the bigger picture of things. And the bigger picture is like, you know what I'm saying? We all need to repent <laughs> for everything that's going on in, in the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, we need to repent, but I feel like we need to turn back to the Lord and the Lord's ways. We need to turn back and get our eyes back on the word of God, you know? And because if we don't, then, um, you know, we're, we're trapped into all type of things, but let me, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a little bit deeper on this later with, with Darius. Um, but for me, what that dude does, you know, in his personal life is really not my business, you know? And I think people, we need to start understanding that we think their personal business is our business. And it's not, I understand that that's the business of life, but it's not our business. And the Bible says that, you know, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. So what is my thought on this? Man, repent, turn to the Lord, get into your word, pray, because we are in some crazy evil times. Because hey, uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. You got to tell him no. <laughs> Cat said, you got to tell him no. But you know what else we got to tell no is the devil. You know, for us believers is the ways of this world, the culture of this world. Um, it's starting to blind the eyes of the people. But that's why I say stay in your word, stay with, you know, people of God, you know, be in prayer. So we do not get trapped up in these type of things. Has it changed my perspective of them? Absolutely not. You know, Darius is still Eddie Winslow. You know, Carl is still, you know, Carl Winslow. I don't look at them any differently because my mom taught me when I was young, you know, to appreciate what they do, but let them show you who they are, right? What they do is not an indication of who they are. That kind of shows over time. And to me, Reginald seems like a stand-up guy, you know, and I got some stuff. I got some more stuff um, as far as uh, Darius. But has it changed my opinion about them? Absolutely not. Would it stop me from watching Family Matters? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Because my mama, my mama always told me from when I was young, you know, to appreciate the gift that God has given them, the ability, appreciate, love what they do. But it doesn't always mean that you have to love who they are or even like who they are. And I think really that's why I can separate things so much. My mom taught me this very, very young. You know, um, Carl Winslow, uh, Reginald, Vil John Reginald Vil Johnson is not Carl Winslow. So stop thinking that he is because he's not. You know, uh, Darius McCrary is not Eddie Winslow. He's Darius McCrary. Like, and I think if more people were to recognize and get in between that thing and separate it and understand that who they are is not necessarily um, what they do. There might be people that play characters that are not that great, but they're amazing people in real life or vice versa, right? So I, I think if people could understand that more um, and get out of people's business, you know, this world would be a better place.
If family Myers ever came back, would I want to want to be a part of the cast? Yes, of course. Then I would love to be. I would love to be. This is amazing. Like, yeah. And you saw that was Orlando Brown. You know the one y'all keep trying to throw away. You know, you know, you're the Orlando Brown that y'all keep trying to throw away. Um, and they, he was asked if they, you know, if they ever did a reboot of Family Matters. You know, would he want a part? He said, "Of course, it would be like it would be an honor, right?" And so I thought this was really cool because he never heard it from his perspective. You know, it's, it, it, you know, like the all the different things that he's gone through. It looks like he had a you know good time on Family Matters. He said, "Of course, it would be an honor, right?" But here's the thing: when we talk about reboot, I'm like y'all. Y'all really don't want to reboot. Y'all keep saying you want to reboot, but you really don't want to reboot because if you guys are going to go and say people like Laura Winslow and, uh, it, you know, you're going to say she's toxic or you're going to say, you know, I saw even a thing on uh, a thing with friends and it said Rachel Green was toxic, you know, which I think we throw away that we throw around that word way too much, in my opinion. But if you guys think that those type of people who were our heroes back then and still really now and you want to say that they're toxic, y'all don't really want to reboot. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Think about it in today's culture, you can't go back and do some of the th things that, that were done, right? Now people are easily offended, right? They're very sensitive, you know, um, people can't laugh at themselves anymore. And really it's because we're in, we don't want to admit it, but we're in the most broken place that we've ever been, ever. But we're exactly where God said we would be if you read your Bible. If you read your word, we're exactly where God said we're supposed to be, right? But we are in the end times, we're in these end days where good is called evil and evil is called good. And, and it, it wouldn't fly today. When there's one thing... Kate, um, Candace Cameron goes and says that she's going to, you know, probably keep it focused more on the traditional family and everybody wanted to take off her head. Oh, that's all she said. She didn't say nothing else. She didn't put, no, oh, we'll probably keep it this way. That's it. And everybody wanted to take off her head. Well, you know what family matters represents the traditional family. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, if they don't, I know this now, if they don't go and put all this other stuff in it that they deem is, is right and good then it ain't going to happen. So Family Matters can't, would not be able to come back and bring the pureness of the show. You know, they wouldn't be able to do it. And like I said before, um, the Urkel dude, you know, he doesn't deem anybody else worthy to work with. So it would never, it would never probably happen anyway. Uh, the, the Urkel dude has said on many occasions that he does not want to do that. He wants to do, I think he's even releasing a book like Urkel's Day in the Life or Day in the Life of Urkel or it's Urkel time or Urkel go get it. I don't know what it is, but I know he, he has some book that's being released. I'm assuming that, this is going to be all about him. We got upset when he out his little cartoon and people were feeling some type of way because they thought that the Winslow's was going to be in it. Like, guys, he don't want to do nothing with them. OK, I'm going to get into that. He don't want to do nothing with them. So odds are it's not going to happen anyway. But if it were, you know, like I said, for me, I feel like we need to leave these shows alone. They are representation of what it was then. Let them be. Let them live. Enjoy what these people, what they've done. Go back. Family Matters has 250 episodes. Go, you, you know what I'm saying? Go watch them from beginning to end, which most of y'all don't do. That's why you have mis, mis, misguided thoughts on Family Matters and lore and all that type of stuff. But go and watch these shows and go and enjoy them um, for what they are. Oh, I love that Orlando Brown, because let me speak on this for a second. I told you I'm talking all topics. Family Matters right now. Orlando Brown is the most talented one to come out of Family Matters. Oh, yeah, I said that. Orlando Brown is the most talented one to come out of Family Matters. Uh, the Urkel dude needs to be happy that Orlando Brown came onto Family Matters when he did when he was a kid because he would have absolutely taken over that show because Orlando Brown, the one that I said, y'all keep trying to throw away. Orlando Brown is the most talented person. Now think about how much I love Kelly. Kelly Williams, who played Laura. Think about how much, and I'm still saying, Orlando Brown is the most talented one to come out of that show, to come from that show. You, you, that man can do, he can rap, he can sing, he can dance. He is naturally funny, but because of, because of temptations and culture and Hollywood culture, you know, um, they, again, y'all trying to throw away the ones that God, God ain't throwing away. Y'all trying to throw them away. God ain't throw away Orlando Brown. Not at all, but, but, but y'all have, but if he wouldn't have fell into some of the things that he fallen into or whatever, he would be one of the biggest names today and he still may do it, but he would be one of the biggest names because that, because God did not put all that stuff on the inside of him on accident. That Orlando Brown can literally do everything. It is the most um, su successful one out of Family Matters is Brighton James. Oh, recognized gang. It's Brighton James. He is the one, the most successful one to come out of Family Matters. Hands down. I think he got some Emmys. He's been on, a, on some show. I think, yeah, I think he's won Emmys and all that type of stuff. So he's been the most successful to come out of Family Matters. But the most talented, the most gifted is definitely Orlando Brown. So if you bring some of these people back, I think, I mean, I don't know why people think it can't happen without the Urkel dude. And you go and you're trying to go and repeat and redo. You got to retool, right? And so I don't know. I think bringing back, Orlando, I'm telling you, man, you bring back Orlando Brown 
I mean, he's enough by itself. You know, you bring back Orlando, you bring back Cherry, you bring back Waldo. Like I said, these people don't want to tell you this. Media doesn't want to tell you this because media has their, their, their way of doing things so they can make their money off the people. So they, they push, 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 you know, the Urkel character. But I'm telling you, against pop with popular kids, they were in the high school hallways, they was on the bus, they was going to the mall, you know, uh, choir rehearsal on Saturday morning. Woo, that was a drag, boy, I tell you. I love you, Lord. But choir rehearsal on Saturday mornings was woo, okay. But... All of that, people were talking about Waldo and Laura. People were not talking about Steve Urkel. That was the media's baby. And it still is the media's baby, right? That's still the media's baby to this day. But I guess Family Matters were to come back, um, even without the Urkel dude. 100% think it can happen. I actually think it would be very successful. I told you, get that Orlando Brown on there. Get that Brighton James on there. Get some of them up on there. You'd be all, Family Matters would be all right if they wanted to reboot. But like I said, man, just enjoy what they've already done. In the rough beginning, White had as he was being introduced to the show. When we came on, producers told us the dynamic was going to change. The shows were going to be about him, and we said, okay. We weren't happy about it. I think along the way, it got to be a little resentful, but it was an adjustment that we had to make. And this is what I'm saying too. And I, like I said, I, I do hope that peace comes, but Joe Marie told us what it was from the very beginning. Similar. He didn't have the etiquette that maybe I and some others had. She said that he does not, you know, the Urkel guy, the Urkel dude, does not have the etiquette, right? And if you go and you watch him in interviews and you watch him interact, you will see like, that's that's pretty much what it is. He does not have the etiquette, right? And so with, with, with the young lady on Comedy Hype, shout out to them. They do a fantastic job. But what she said, you know, it was something that we had to adjust to, but it became resentful along the way. This is a question you got to ask yourself. Why wasn't it resentful from the beginning? Why did it why did it come to be resentful? Because I've been trying to tell y'all what it is. You know, it's not about the fact that somebody gets a level of success. It's what the person does with that success. It's what the person does when that person gets a level of success. How does he treat the people around him? Just like I said, I showed you in these other videos. He drags Jamie. He ain't got, he ain't got nothing nice to say with none of the women that he's worked with on camera. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or he can say, oh, yeah, Kelly could match me. But then go and talk about, you know, th her puberty. Like, what? The, like, and then when he talks about Jamie, just says straight out, Jamie wouldn't get it. Like, he does not. You, you see what I'm saying? So this is it. And you think. You, you really think this isn't how he was when you, he was probably worse when he was younger. He was probably worse. You gave that man power. You gave him money. You gave him celebrity. I told you he's the media's baby and he probably treated people that way. He, he seems like a person that stomps on the people around him. And that's probably what was some of what was going on there. And if you want me to pick, if you want me to trust the character of a person, I'm trusting Joe Marie over the Jalil person any day, all day. Hand, hands to my side, hands to my back, blindfolded, you know, like whatever. Like there's no way because because Joe Marie has shown through the years way more character as a person, as a human being than he ever will in his lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Not welcome to the cast at all. They know what it was. I didn't think anything of it being cast to be on Family Matters because it was supposed to be the, it was supposed to be only a guest spot. One and done. And I'll just say this. If you if you guys go do your homework, you will you will see. Well, I wasn't real welcomed by the class. Well, you didn't. If you go back and you go look at the interviews with Jalil, this man has said that he didn't think the show was all that. He didn't think it was funny. It wasn't good as the Cosby show. You know, he says all this. So he goes in with this negative energy, but then expect you're going to get positive energy. Guys, that's an oxymoron. You can't do that. You can't walk into a situation and be looking down on everybody and then be feeling some type of way when they're looking at you crazy. And now he says this himself. He, I can't even put all of it on here because it would look like I'm dragging this man and it would take five videos to do it. Okay? We'll step there and say, well, he was a kid. So was Kelly. Well, he was a kid. So was Darius. Well, he was a kid. So was Jamie. As a matter of fact, the one that he continues to target was actually younger than him by three, four years. And well, I'm not talking about this. This bringing up all this talking about all the subjects, all the topics, all the things that kind of came at me. And as we know, that is a big one that he wasn't, you know, welcomed by the cast. And all that type of stuff like, you know, but he also said in an interview and I'll maybe put the, the article up here where he says that he felt safe and sound and everything in his working environment. Those are the things that are important. And how he's stepping on Kelly and stepping on Darius and stepping on, you know, uh, on, on Jamie and she's going to be the mama bear about it. And I really think that that's all it is. You know, I have aunties that are her age, so I know I know how they flow, you know, and. They, they, the mama bear come out a lot. And that's probably all that situation is right there. Again, hope that it does get rectified, you know, and that they become one, you know, like Will and Janet Hubert, because they did great things together. Uh, you were here, and I can hug you. I want you. Because I don't hold anything, and I don't want you to hold anything either. I still love you. I still see you as that little boy that you were. You're 12 years old when you came to this show. I'm still the same child. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you for coming, baby. Oh, this is terrible. You haven't changed a bit. I'm you know, I'll just say nothing but just to find this next embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> don't say Janet. Don't say Hubert. Janet. 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 
I love the maturity that Joe Marie showed there, you know, and letting um, the Urkel dude know, like, it's all peace, it's all love. That's what you got to do, man, to keep your heart good and be able to sleep at night. Good move. Joe Marie and Reggie at that time were very sensitive to putting black men in dresses. And they, they keep that on me. And they, they, they let me know that I was not doing our race a service by putting on that yellow dress. Pull, pull out Big Mama's house, too. I almost died. And I got to read this script from all these good white people. Get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? The dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. And now, what are we, what are we seeing? We're seeing Kat talk about it. We're seeing um, uh, uh, Dave Chappelle and others talk about it, right? And could it possibly be that Joe Marie and Reginald were trying to watch out for him? Because here's the thing. Every guy that puts on a dress is not the same thing, right? It's not equal to the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at, you have him, he's putting on a dress. He's a kid. He's a young teenage boy. You know, maybe they know some of the stuff that's going on in Hollywood, but he don't. And he's a kid and he puts on that dress. But the, here's the other thing that you got to look at too, when he puts on that dress. He's also, he's putting on the dress as a girl pursuing a boy. That's all Myrtle did. There was nothing else to Myrtle, but to pursue Eddie. There's nothing else. You have to look at all of that. And this was like in the nineties and stuff like that. And so could it be, could it be? That they were looking out for him. Dollars four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. You know, there's certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? You're just talking about all these different situations, you know, with Family Matters. And like I said, man, if, I, if you're gonna have me rock anyway, I wanna rock with you. Oh, not. If, I, if I'm going to rock with anybody, it's Joe Marie. Joe Marie has been the one that's consistently showed high character. She's also an, an older woman, you know, who has lived this life, you know, has lived the Hollywood life. And she still seems, you know what I'm saying, real and, and relevant. You know I must say? That girl, Kelly Williams, I knew she was going to be a beautiful woman and that she was going to age well. Because she is. She, she has aged beautifully. That she was going to end up being a beautiful woman as she aged and that she did you know she still even when i was looking at the little clips she still seemed very um mature and solid seemed so old before her time like oh girl get them up underneath your mama go to a party or something do something so i, I love this here because i love how she giving kelly like props because i feel like kelly's always you know overlooked or like i said underestimated and stuff like that but the real ones know what it is right the real sisters, the real sis, we know what it is. So I love that, you know, she sees the goodness and the great, you know, the greatness and the beautiness and the awesomeness, the everythingness of Kelly. I think that is so awesome because like I said, I feel like a lot of times Kelly really gets overlooked. You know what I'm saying? So I love, I love that she, that she said that. But let's look at the other thing. So when she said, get up under your mama, go, do, go to a party, right? She was actually talking about Laura there. So she started off talking about Kelly and she started talking about the character of Laura. And I thought that was really interesting, you know, because it's very interesting how people have their um, perceptions of, of Laura, right? Um, because it's like Laura wasn't up on her, was not up under her mom at all. Like, that was some of the problems that, that, you know, mama wanted to spend more time with her. Daddy wanted to spend more time, but she wanted to go kick it with her friends, you know? And so it's interesting how people have their, their viewpoint on it. That's, look, and that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to come back and do this, you know, wanted to come back and do the show because when I was growing up, Laura was my favorite by far, okay? Like, by far. And I wanted to see, now that I'm older, now that I've become a, a Christian, right? You know, I'm living for Christ, you know? And you, you know, when you really become, like, when you for real, like, become a Christian, like, for real, you know, he changes your heart. He changes, you know, your um, your opinions, you know, to, you know, your thoughts to think like him, to see things like him, right? So I really wanted to go and look and be like, man, do I see things the same way? And the one thing I would say with Laura, yeah, yeah she's still my favorite by far, <laughs> But that has not changed, which is actually surprising. I wanted to see, did somebody else creep up? Nah, you know what I'm saying? Laura's the truth. I absolutely, I absolutely, I think I may adore her more. Nah, I probably adore her more then than I do now. But I still, me and my friends still adore her so much. But I think the thing that I really learned, um, and let's get into this for a second. But I think the thing I really learned was how um, uh, um, glorifying the Stephen Lord, how God glorifying the Stephen Lord storyline was. I did not realize how God is all mixed up in that and how that relationship of Stephen Lord actually glorifies God. You know, it is such a beautiful thing. And this is why I also understand why people attack it so much because we all, we want to attack everything good. We want to tear down everything good. We definitely, definitely, you know, want to tear down everything, tear down everything God, right? Everything God, everything good. We're trying to tear down, right? We see that that's what that is today. That's the culture that we're in, right? And so the Bible even lets us know that, right? That it says, you know, uh, the, 
you know, people will call good evil and evil good, right? And so that's what a lot of people do now with Stephen Lore because you don't really realize this. This what I said even about Lore, like, and I, I talked about a little bit in my in my video. This is a spiritual thing that y'all, that a lot of y'all don't even realize because you don't have the eyes or the heart of God. You don't have the the uh, you don't have the discernment to see like, oh wow, like God, you're using this for your glory. You're using, and so that's why Laura Winslow gets attacked so much. Oh yes, because it's a spiritual thing. That's why she gets attacked so much. That's why a lot of y'all want Myra and Steve because Myra and Steve does not represent what is good. Myra and Steve does not represent God. It doesn't. Myra, from the moment she met Steve, was trying to get him in the bed, you know what I'm saying? Was trying to red light special him. You know, she's trying to speed up the process. You know, Myra was with Steve. Myra wanted to be with Steve out of uh, insecurity, not out of love. Remember, Myra even said to Laura, when they were, oh, they, Myra, Myra went to go live, uh, no, Laura went to go live with Myra, right? Uh, you, again, desperate. That's how desperate Myra is. You're like, Lauren, you'll come. Even if you come stay with me, please, Lord, please. Right? But in the situation that they were in, and I show this many of times on my other videos, Myra says to Laura, Myra says to Laura, remember, hear my words. Myra says to Laura, my, Laura, why can't I be like you? Why can't I have friends like you? Why can't I be popular like you? Right? So that is an indication that Myra was attacking what she wanted to be in Laura, Right? Uh, and, and attacking and, and attacking Laura because Laura was a representation of what she wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that's what my point is, right? Laura, Laura is a representation of what, like my friend said, of what is good, of what is God. She's a representation of that. And Myra is not. You know what I'm saying? So that, but and that's where I had to find my peace at is understanding that oh, they don't have the eyes of God. Oh, they don't have the heart of God. Even the Urkel, even the Urkel do. You know, if he sees Jesus as somebody that's going that's going to be puffity puffity, smokey smokey with him, then he's not the, he's not the savior of the world, and he has some kind of mixed view. Of, of what he thinks, of, of who he thinks Jesus is. So he definitely ain't seeing things from the right way, right? He's definitely not seeing things through the right eyes right there because he got it mixed up. I don't know. He needs to go get one of his friends and do the smokey smoke, but not with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? So we understand that, and, and I understand this now, and I get it now. Get it now that, that you know, we're a culture that is going to tear down everything that's good, everything that's God, everything that's God glorifying, everything that's holy. And so once I really started to realize that, you know, from the Stephen Laura storyline, even to Laura, you know, that this is a, this really is a spiritual thing that Lo that Myra and Steve does not actually represent real true love, you know, and that Stephen Laura do, because you understand that there's going to be bumps along the road, you know, there, there's, you know, there's going to be at times an opportunity, however you want to look at it, that you're going to have to apologize. You're going to have to get forgiveness. You're going to have to be forgiven. Right. And this is how, let, I'll say it real quick, how it actually glorifies God is very simple because that's how it was for us. The Bible says. We loved him because he first loved us. We look at him. We understand who God is. We understand how holy he is. We understand his standard of holiness, his standard of right, his standard of just. Then you will understand that we fall short as humans every single day. Okay. Every single day we need grace. Every single day we need mercy. You know, we don't get it right all the time. We, met, we mess up. That's the beauty. That is the beauty of the cross, right? And this is where the cross, the crisscross, if you will, with Stephen Laura comes in. It's the same thing, right? It wasn't, on the, you know, good from the beginning. Laura didn't understand her value. She didn't understand Steve's value. She messed up. She popped off. But she would always try to get it right. You end up apologizing. I just can't figure out why I knew that. As long as Laura tried to get it right, Steve was, it was, Steve was right, right? As long as, as long as Laura would go and apologize and make things right, Steve gave forgiveness. Steve gave grace. Steve showed grace. And Laura showed it too. All the times that Steve would go and break her stuff when she specifically was like, nah, bruh, like, nah, nah, nah. And he still would kind of come around and break her stuff. She had to walk in grace. She, Laura had to learn patience. And that's what's so beautiful about the story of Stephen and Laura is they grew into it, right? They grew, they kind of grew into who they were and in growing in who, who they were, they grew in love with each other, right? The beauty of the love story, and that's the beauty, and that's what I'm saying. That's the beauty of it when it comes to God. Like when we sit up and we think that, oh, this person ain't worthy of this person, or this person. People say the Lord wasn't good enough. Lord wasn't good enough for Steve. You, you don't even get to determine what's good, friend. You're not good. You probably need to repent and ask for the Lord's forgiveness. Like you know what I'm saying? God, it's what God deems good. It's what God deems just, right? And if, 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 this is what I'm saying. If if God treated us. The way y'all want Steve to treat Laura, we, were, we would all be jacked up. We would all be hopeless. And that's, again, the beauty of what I said about Steve and Laura and didn't realize how intertwined, how, how much is intertwined with the cross, 
how much is intertwined with Jesus. And so I bring it all back around. Now I have a piece about it because I see what it is. Like God has allowed me to see it through even a greater eyes and through a greater heart. But I also understand that because it represents God, because it's a represent, representation of God and Myra and Steve isn't, Myra and Steve is a representation of culture, of the world, of fake love. And that's what everybody's going to run to because you're not going to run to the things of God. You're not going to run to things that honor God, not unless you actually want to honor God, right? And that's what the Stephen Lord story does. It honors God. You know what I'm saying? And or was my favorite thing and she's my favorite now because she never comes off like she's this perfect person, but she always tries to get it right. And those are people that you can do life with. Those are people that you can do relationships with. It's people that admit like, oh man, I, I messed that up, but I'm going to try to do better. And Laura did better. That is the thing about it. Laura actually took accountability and did better. So Laura's always going to be my favorite. Laura, Laura Winslow is iconic. Um, but not only is she iconic, man, she is a hero to a lot of us. And Kelly should always get her props on that. Real talk. Black men have married out their race more than all other men in America put together. Are you going to tell me it's a pure coincidence? That, that is a very interesting statement that he, oh gosh, very in interesting statement that he made there. Again, my, my uncle right there, the one that passed away. But this is one of the conversations that we had. Um, if you haven't figured out now, I'm a conversationalist. I get on a lot of people's nerves because they really don't like, like to have these in-depth conversations. But, you know, he was one of the ones that did. And um, unfortunately, he's not here anymore. But one of the conversations we had is he'd be like, hey, I think I found the one. I think I found the one, you know. And, I, and so I, I just asked. I just asked him. This is how this stuff goes with, with me, right? I just asked him. I said, oh, where is she? Black or white? And he was like, what, what you mean? Like, not like you haven't married a WW in the past. And, he, and then he, he said, he was like, have I since then, though? And I was like, I never noticed. Because I frankly don't care. Right? You know what I'm saying? You know, and so I, but I never noticed. I was like, oh, I said, you, you're right. Like, I asked him, I said, well, what, what changed the, the tone there? Your first wife was a WW. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. He was like conditioned in a way, right, to, uh, to believe that the WWs are the better woman, right? He said he was told that if you want to have a, if you want to have a good looking, wah, wah, you know what I'm saying? If you want your children to be beautiful, if you want your children to be beautiful, you need to get with a W. He was told this. I'm not saying this. He was told, not a black woman. This is just so crazy to me, man. Like, stuff that men are taught at such a young age that is so, uh, okay, anyway. He said he believed it. Conditioned. He likes new addition. That's what he's doing right now. But he was conditioned um, to believe that the WW was the superior woman. Right. And he said, I'm going to tell you right now, he said straight up, there are so many of these dudes that have been conditioned. There's so many brothers that have been conditioned to think that way. I'm just putting it all out there because, you know, I'm hoping that when I put out there, I'm giving some sort of solution or just open up your eyes or something. But I, I started to recognize when my uncle told me this. And I remember I used to have my friends, my guy friends. Right. And they would bring a WW home. Right. Or, you know, or to the to the to the party, to the party, or, you know, or hang out or whatever. And I would see the other dudes and they would be like, oh, bro, she's fire, bro. She's fire. She's bomb. She's da 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 da. Dang, dude, she's beautiful. Right. And then I noticed the same dude say they break up or whatever, you know, nothing big, nothing happens of it. They break up and he goes and brings home um, or brings to the party, the party party, like I said, or come to hang out. And he brings this beautiful, because this has actually happened. Okay. This actually happened. He brings home this beautiful black woman and, you know, got goals. No, she's not, you know, you know, ghetto or whatever you want to call it. She's not that. She got a good head on her shirt. She's beautiful. And then these same bruh bruhs, they go and they say, oh, bruh. It looked like you got a real one right there, bruh. Yeah, bruh. It looked like you got a real one. You did good for yourself right there, bruh. And I'm thinking to myself, man, why isn't the black woman, ooh, bruh, she fire, bruh. She fire, bruh. Why, why is it not that with the black woman? Why? I understand because some guys told me, no, it's actually more of a compliment. It's saying that you found the right one. You found the real one. You know, that's the one that you take home to mama, whatever. And I understand all that, but I just don't understand why the expression of being hot and fire and bomb is not the same with the black woman. When I see the Urkel dude, like how he don't give Kelly the props and sort of do props that are right, all that type of stuff. It's like all of that is against the black woman. All of that is against the shine of the black woman, you know, and it was just like, wow. And it made me really start to think, and I'm gonna keep it really real with y'all right now. And made me start to, because I'm not from a family that with you, you, I don't know, you would call ratchet or, you know, you know, ghetto fab or whatever. You know, we don't have our nail. It, it, we ain't really like that. We don't really, matter of fact, I just cut my regular nails today. You know, they grow on their own and, and I cut them because they was, they were, they were too long. I, I don't, I don't like all that, but it really made me have to take a step back and recognize the struggle of the black woman. I have already said I am not that much of an attractive person. I'm about a three, four, you know, a, a six on a good day. I'm not coming from this place of like, yeah, I'm, I know I look good. No. Okay. So let's understand. But the WW that my friend brought home, real talk, she wasn't really even that pretty. Like, I'm just being real. She wasn't like, she was like a, with me, to be honest with you. That's how I know. She wasn't really that much better looking than me. You know, she was maybe a three, four. And then the, the, the black woman that he brought, she was like a 10, a nine, a 10. 
And she couldn't get out there. Oh, she fired, bro. Like, you know, and so it really started to show me the way society looks at the black woman. And it made me realize, it made me take a step back and realize black women have to work so much harder to just be noticed. They have to work so much harder to just be, uh, to be looked at as pretty, to be looked at as um, attractive, right? So then it started making me, and I'm not saying this for every woman, but then it started, it really started to make me understand like, oh, this might be why they got their lashes all the way down the street, right? Why they got their nails all the way down the street, why they got some of their precious jewels that the Lord gave them for only one man to see, but they let the world see it. It makes me understand this stuff now, like women, black women have to fight so hard just to be seen, just to be seen, just to be recognized, just to be taken seriously, right? All these things, it just started to, it, it just started to really show me, you know, the struggle of the black woman. I just under, I, again, I've never been one that's, you know, looked at as ratchet. I've never been called, if anything, I've been called a square, if anything, or the other one is a Bible thumper. That's what I get called a lot. I've never been called ratchet. I've never been, you know, I, you know, been called street or hood or that. As a matter of fact, when I try to be like that, my parents laugh at me. Uh, so it, when I, let me be like, let me be honest. Maybe even at times look down on it, just being real. You know what I'm saying? Because what happens a lot of times we look down on what we don't understand. Got to really fight to be recognized and to be a, a black woman can be and a, a black woman can go and be a 20, not even a 10, a 20. And you can go get a WW. She got a tan. She got the blonde hair going and all that. She's oh man, she's she's the better looking. Da, 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 and it's like, guys. This is why black women feel the way they do, because we, we're not silly, not that good looking of a person, but I can still look and be like, I know she better looking at her <laughs> and I know she better looking at her. Right. And I, I, and I'd never noticed that a black woman has to work so much harder, harder just to be looked at as attractive. So I'm just saying, can we can we think about these things when we want to go and we want to judge the black woman? But let's get into let's get into the bigger topic here. Lord wasn't trying to give my man no play, man. She, she forced him into the hands of a, of a white man. I mean, a, a white woman. Okay, so let's talk about this, man. Because first of all, again, I, I'm trying to still figure out the logic in this. That Laura has something to Laura the character. Laura Winslow the character has any something to do with Jalil the person. Look, this is what this is why, guys. I, I'm very concerned for our, our nation, our culture. I'm very concerned that people can't get between the difference of a character in real life. It scares me. Like it, it really does. It really, it legitimately scares me because I don't know what people would think Laura Winslow would have to do with this. But let's get to this, right? What did he say? Um, Laura pushed him into the hands of a WW bad. Like it went viral. Um, there's a lot of people that feel that exact same way. Not necessarily that Laura did it. People feel that the Urkel dude, you know, he betrayed y'all by marrying a WW in which I'm like, uh, where y'all been? I've been trying to tell y'all this, where y'all been? <laughs> this is what he prefers. That's what he prefers. Right. That's why I was telling y'all when y'all like the rumor and Kelly and Jaleo, I'm like, you know, Kelly can be, this is, this is the issue, right? You can have, and this is what I'm going to get you, you can have the most, some of the most beautiful black women you'll ever see. Kelly is in that category of one of the most beautiful women that you will ever see. And he can't find nothing good to say about her. You know, like he can't find, like he want to talk about her puberty. That's what he, what this young black girl is doing. Oh, yes. oh she's, she's oh, lighting yes. it up. She's lighting it up. Lighting it and up. I don't think I appreciated it nah. then. No, nah, and listen, even, you know, Kelly also was going through her, puberty was hell on Kelly. Um, Come to her oh, on some days with the real deal thing Right. But if but if Kelly like really, really wanted to stunt on y'all one time for all y'all to be like, she ain't even pretty like that. I'm like, OK, if she wanted to stunt on y'all one time, she could. Kelly is a gorgeous woman like today. Now, you know, again, like I said, that's why I never believed the, the rumor, because you can go and work with this beautiful, goodness, gracious type of woman. That, you know, that, let, let my boys tell you, let my boys. Say, <laughs> that's what they say. Goodness gracious. Right. Um, You could go work with a woman like that. Beautiful inside and out inside and out and all and you know and all he can measure up to do is tease and tease and taunt and all that stuff and that is the problem beautiful black women get overlooked underestimated and teased for just being black baby but that that's who he is that's who he appears to be matter at hand um should people really care who to little Mary? No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Why, why is it offensive? First of all, let's give the man props that he want that, that in this day and age when people are shacking up and doing marital things without being married, at least he still is honoring marriage. And talking about like this, this is like never like hidden. This has always been a rumor, but let's just check it out. Jalil, Jalil Steve Urkel White's dating history. Only white woman and he prefers blondes. Like guys, this has never been hidden. This has always been um, a rumor even going back to back in the day, you know, even I think why the show was still on. This is what I really think the issue is because you can't be surprised on who this man married. You cannot be surprised. 
right? And this, and here's the other thing. Let me say this real quick. People will just sit up here and say, I've, I've read in a lot of the comments, right, um, that, uh, again, blaming Laura, blaming a black woman, right? It's the black woman's fault. You're blaming Laura for it, number one. Number two, the other thing that I noticed was um, that, there, that, that there are people really, like, you know, upset. You know, like I said, they feel like, you know, he, he betrayed them and this and that. It's like, guys, that, that is his preference. And he has a right to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has a right to that. What's the other thing that people say? Oh, well, you know, uh, black women. Black women weren't giving him any play. I don't believe that. Oh, yeah. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I personally like Stefan. <laughs> he could have got He could have hollered at me back then. Okay. Thank uh, God I played Stefan because it allowed black women to see me in the way I actually <laughs> right. am. I had... I had no idea. Now, that's that's the standard. I mean, I could be driving down Crenshaw and yeah. literally off a bus stop. Hey, that's Stefan. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. very happy I played that character because it, it saved me in my own community. Stefan saved my life. <laughs> and any hood I even go into, I don't care if it's a Waffle House in Atlanta or, you know, uh, a chicken spot in freaking Maryland. Girl, Stefan just walked in here. <laughs> and I love it. I love it to this day. Then when he became Stefan to some of y'all women, because I think some of y'all don't like Stefan, I think y'all might be a little insecure. Just, just, my, just my opinion. Just my opinion. Um, when, he likes, when he was Stefan, he was getting out of action, boss. He was getting out of action. You know, he had no trouble. So you can't tell me that the Urkel dude who has status and has money and he's a decent looking guy and got, you know, maybe about 5% swag. You trying to tell me that he had issue with getting black women? No, I think what it is is two things. I think one is he's not attracted to black women. He worked with one of the black, one of the most beautiful black women to ever walk the earth. I didn't say she's the only one, but she's one of the few. And he ain't never, that ain't never coming. He has never described Kelly like that. Ain't never described her like that. Be oh yeah, oh Kelly, yeah, she beautiful. To never. If anything, he's tearing her down. Well, she went through puberty and we had to, we had to deal with her going through puberty and all this other type of stuff, right? Could it be that, no, it's not that he couldn't pull a black woman. It's that that's not really what he was attracted to. Nothing wrong with Jalil marrying who he married. Blessings to him. It is a beautiful thing. God honors marriage. God loves marriage. You, let's let's root that that marriage works out. Period. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you can't convince me it's it's it, that he married this woman because he couldn't get a black woman. That is that is insane. Like it, it's just. And what does it do again? What does it what does it do? What is it? What are you hearing? It once again blames the black. Or well, the black woman wouldn't give him no play, so he had to go over here. Or could it be he fell in love with this woman? Your issue. It, I, I believe it's not actually with the, who Jaleel married. I think it's with the fact that he comes off as one of those type of brabras that does not value the black woman. So then when you don't value the black woman and you go marry over here, it's going to make people feel some type of way. Okay. It, and, and that's guys. And that I believe is the real issue. Can I give an example? We, and I'm just talking about these things to bring awareness, but isn't it, you know, interesting in some of the stuff we deal with that at WW can get, uh, can be successful and she's a catch. A black woman is successful and she's a threat, right? So, and we know, we know that this is true. And why am I talking about it? Because it's like, guys, y'all not really upset at who this person married, that person married, who Jalil married. We're, we're upset because of the way we feel society is treating us. And you just really have to ask the question, why? And let me make sure I say this, man, because like I said, God is a God of unity, right? Uh, you know, Queen Latifah wasn't the first one to say U and I T U I, right? That was the Lord. Okay. That was the Lord. I just want to know. Y'all know this is the, y'all know I'm telling y'all the truth right now. Could it possibly be that culture society expected the WW to be successful and not the black woman? And so now the black woman having success now becomes a threat. Could it be? This is what I'm talking about, right? So this is, these are guys, these are the real actual issue. Oh, she, she got this skin tone. She's a WW. So what? That isn't the issue. Especially if you're a Christian, that should not be coming out your mouth. At all whatsoever. The big issue is that the black woman does not feel valued in society. That the black woman can go and she can have success. She has the same level of success as the WW, but she's a threat. And the other, the other, the WW is a catch. That's what we're dealing with. That's what the true issue is. So much harder to be seen, to be heard, to be valuable, to be important, to be uh, uh, attractive. And if we start to focus on what it really is, is that the black woman feel, does not feel valued. But I saw some messages, you know, and people were saying like, yeah, you know, it's good that that Urkel dude uh, didn't marry Kelly, didn't marry Laura. His wife way better. She way flyer. She way better. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, this is, again, what the issue is. OK, let's keep it really, really real. Uh, Urkel dude's wife may have a nice figure, but this is the problem. OK, because we, we, we recognize what it is. She ain't got nothing on Kelly on nothing else. If you want to say she got a nice shape. OK, we'll give you that. But she don't have nothing else on Kelly. Never a problem with me being a fat black woman because real black men, they like them in all yeah, shapes and yeah, sizes, yeah. all complex. Mm -hmm. and into, she got to be this way. She got to be that way. But real black men, if you can bake a pound cake naked, <laughs> <laughs> what y'all talking about? 
And it don't matter. Kelly can be thin or thick. It don't matter. Kelly is a bad shut your mouth woman. And so, th- again, this are, these are the issues. It's like, y'all think we can't see what it is? And this is where the, the black woman starts to feel devalued. It's because y'all sitting up here lying to us about stuff. Now, let me say this. I want you to understand where I'm coming from. Understand that some of the most beautiful women to ever walk this earth are WWs, are white women. Some of the most beautiful women, Jennifer Aniston, Gwen Stefani. You know, even back in my day, it was like Heather Locklear from, from Baywatch. Beautiful. This is not what this is about. This is about like not telling the truth or, you know, saying this, this woman's prettier over this woman just for the fact of saying it. Because our eyes can see what the real truth is. This is what this is about. You know, because then what happens, you feel disingenuous and then you're devaluing. And that is the whole issue right there. It's not because, um, you know, WWs, white women can't be more attractive. It's just that the timing in which you use it. Like I said, my friend, he goes and brings home this, you know, this woman, this WW woman, and she's okay. And then he brings home this beautiful black queen woman and his friends, are, you know, with, with the WW woman, they're like, oh man, she the bomb. She fired. She the bomb. Then he goes and brings home a much more attractive black woman. Let's just, it's just what it is. Much more attractive black woman. And she don't get that. She don't get that. She's bomb. She fired. She gets that. Oh man, look like you got a good one. And so that's what we're, that's what the issue of it is, you know, kind of bringing it back around. I think the issue that people have with the Urkel dude, it's not that, you know, he it's not who he married. It's that bad, that bad energy that he gives off and that really society as a whole gives off when it comes to black women. But guys, the Bible says we are all precious in his sight. And that's what we got to understand. We also got to tell the truth. You know, what I'm saying? we got to tell the truth that to sit up here and say, with all due respect to the Urkel's wife, the, come on, man. Kelly, Kelly's a bad one right there. Come on. And that's the problem is that I think a lot of the brothers like the Urkel dude, you know, they say it for the sake of it. Right. But it's not really it's not really the truth or really how they feel. And then and then, it, 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 you know, it makes the black woman feel inferior, you know, insecure, you know, not valuable, not attractive, not wanted. Right. We're going to talk about all of it. OK. And we're going to wrap it up in a boat. I wonder if anybody's ever thought of this when you go. This is another issue that the that the. Uh, uh, culture will say goes against the black woman, but they don't consider this. Have you ever considered with the black women that they're already, you know, uh, uh, being raised that a lot of them, let's keep it a buck are being raised without a, without a father in the home versus the WWs are at least from what I can tell from their families are not known for that, but black women are known for that. So has anybody ever considered that you're dealing with black women that, 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 that society pushes them aside, their daddies push them aside, success even tries to push them aside and so maybe yeah they got a little attitude we got a little attitude yeah maybe we got this we got that has anybody ever thought about that the ww may have been raised from with her, with, um, her dad the whole entire time and good that's what god wants that's amazing that's beautiful that is absolutely beautiful like me i'm not a ww i'm a bw i'm a black woman but my dad is in my life and i tell you this again and again and again it makes a massive difference when they're there and when they're not I have family members around me the same age. Their dad was not around. And I see the impact that it has on them. And I want to just for all your black women, they're so mean. And they're so this. Have you ever thought about that? That you got a lot of these black women trying to figure it out because they didn't have a father around to show them. I have my dad around to show me like, nope, don't let that do a treat. You know what I'm saying? Or you did have your dad around like my grandma told me. My grandma had her dad around. But <laughs> how do you say it? Uh, it wasn't peaceful when he was around. My, gr- my grandma had her father around every single day, but it wasn't peaceful. I won't get into the business of it. Y'all can figure it out. It wasn't peaceful. So, this, so have we considered any of these things when it comes to the black woman? Because I've, I've, I've asked some of the guys, well, why do you, why do you guys date? You know, you don't date um, BWs. You only date WW. Because black women, they got too much attitude. They got too much attitude. I'm just saying, have you ever considered their situation? Have you ever considered... Right. They, they can go and get half success and they're not more of a catch. Black women are not more of a catch because they're successful. They're less of a catch. But WWs are more of a catch with success. This is what you're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. This is what the real issue is. It's not the black man that, that marries the WW. My stepmom is an amazing woman. She's a WW. She's an amazing woman. This woman has blessed my daddy's life. Period. Value of a black a, a, a black woman can't win for losing, man. She goes and she goes and cl- climbs a corporate ladder, works, works, works. She still she's intimidating. Oh, she she only care about the job, bro. She ain't, she's not gonna make a good wife because she worried about her career. The W the WW can do the exact same thing, and she's a catch. This is what the issue is, and it's not even the color of our skin, guys. It's culture. See, this is what happens when we don't have God. This is what happens when we turn away from the things of God. We get to turn to our own things. 
that if people were to turn back and we all just valued each other, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and so I really wanted to talk about this because I think that is the bigger issue when it comes to the Urkel dude. It's not who he married. It's how it's the fact that he has never shown to bring any value to any black woman. Let me go here real quick. My sister, Kelly Williams. This is this is this is us. And um, you guys know that, that smile. Look at that beautiful smile. What's up, sis? <laughs> Girl, you look amazing. Oh, cut it out. Yes. You just you just gonna look that way for the rest of your life. Thanks, you, man. <laughs> I, I ain't never gonna put on no makeup or comb my hair if that's what you're talking about. Just, you don't need to when you that when you're that beautiful. Oh, you see what I'm saying? So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really need to introduce this man to you because it's Chinese <laughs> is a national treasure. Thank you. A force to be reckoned with. No, no, you are. Y'all, I mean, y'all don't even understand what is happening. <laughs> Quarry! Who? And, and the legendary, the iconic, yes. the iconic Chinese Wilson. That's right, guys. So to our listeners, we have the talented Darius McCrary. How are you doing? Welcome, 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 sisters. Wow, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> how am I doing right now? I'm honored. Uh, I'm pleased. I'm surprised. I'm impressed. And uh, I'm completely overjoyed to be in the presence of two amazing queens. Well, thank, you. thank you for hanging out. You're amazing. We're glad that you're here. Oh, no, 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 please. Uh, I'm just a mere reflection of my surroundings, my dear. What did, just, what did we just see Darius do, man? Lift up black women. Lift them up. You saw Shanice. I loved how he even kicked with Kelly right there. And he has said it on numerous occasions. You know, Kelly, my beautiful sister. Kelly, my beautiful sister. Kelly, my beautiful sister. Same thing about Jamie. I've heard him say the same thing about Jamie. Jamie, my beautiful sister. And you saw what he even said to Cherry. And then, um, and even with Joe Marie, I didn't, you know, you saw that with Joe Marie. What did he just do? Darius just lifted up every woman around him that he worked with. Every woman. Right? You even saw that he was doing the interview and he said, oh, I'm just honored to be with you black queens. Right? This is lifting up. You, you will see that about Darius. If, if the Urkel dude was like this, y'all wouldn't have an issue with who, who he was married to. Because you'll recognize that he, he uplifts the black woman. He sees the value in the black woman. But because the Urkel dude don't really give you that flavor like that, that's why, you know what I'm saying, that new flavor in your ear, that's why you're mad with him because he got that new flavor in his ear. His new flavor is WW and you're mad about that. But that isn't actually the real issue. The real issue is the lack of value that you have some bruh bruhs that show black women. But that is not the case for Darius. And let me go back. Let me get, let me get into this real quick, man. And I told you, I told you, I, was, I, I briefly touched on it earlier with Darius. And like I said, this is the last time I'm going to talk about these things with Family Matters. We're going to close the, the chapter here. But let me say this about Mr. Darius, man. Why I don't, um, and this is what I said about, remember what I said about Jaleel. I have not judged Jaleel for anything that he's done personally. My issue is how he don't have nothing like you see what Darius said. That's just one thing right there with Darius. Right. I saw this interview of uh, the Urkel dude and the guy because the guy probably grew up with, with us. Right. And the interview was almost like giving a fact, but then asking a question to Jaleel like, Kelly, she fired, bro. Huh? She fired, bro. Huh? And Jaleel's kind of just like, no, no. And then he, and then he said, uh, uh, what did he say? Um, well, there, there is other there is other girls on that lot, too. So that was his opportunity. Like, oh, yeah, man, that's my sis, man. Kelly, the beautiful girl. No, nope, he just won't. He won't do it. Right. He won't do it. He won't say it. This is the difference in, in, in Darius. And what I and let me tell you something. This is the ones that y'all keep. Y'all ain't gonna cancel this dude. Y'all can keep trying. He's too smart. He's too smart and he's too called and he got too many people praying for him. Y'all ain't gonna cancel this dude. He may bow out willingly out of something, but y'all not gonna cancel him. Because God has appointed him. See, that's what this is what I mean by when y'all got to start seeing things through God's eyes. What I see in Darius is I see a, I'm a, I'll tell you the truth. I see a man who's fallen into temptations like we all do. That's why we need the Lord. OK, that's why we need the Lord and Savior. But he's fallen into temptations. Um, I think he sometimes runs with the wrong people and does, you know, maybe doesn't understand his own value. And, and when you understand your, your, your own value, you realize, OK, I can't walk with him like that. I can't walk with him that tight like that. I'll get with you some days, but I can't walk with you that tight. Right. Maybe those are some of the things. But Darius is a special, special man. And I truly this I'm just going to give you all what God has shown me. OK. Cause see, this was the thing. Y'all, y'all will give uh, 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 stars and 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 everything and applause to the Jalil dude. And I don't see that. I'm just saying for me, I don't see that. But then, who you want to throw away is somebody like Darius. Is somebody like this man that uplifts every environment he's in. And I'm gonna tell you why this is. Darius, what I see in him, he is a world changer. God placed on the inside of him a world changer. Here's what happens, guys. Well, why is it this and that? Let me tell you what simply what happens. Throughout every process between work. And also through with relationships and toxic relationships and everything, that there's a real enemy that is warring for us. And I started to understand that it's not the person or the person that did it. You know, there's a real enemy that was after me and what I was doing because they knew what I would be for the Lord and what that process is. Because, you know, the Lord sees us from eternity. Mm -hmm. So he views you from eternity. So he knows what you were going to be or the powerhouse you're going to be for the Lord. You know what I mean? And what's going to happen. Yep. And so within that happening within my life, all these distractions 
that were going on was to stop me from being who I am within the Holy Spirit. And so that's Kel Mitchell right there. So you see what he said? He said there is an enemy, right? There's a there's an enemy that tries to keep the one thing that I always tell people, and I have to constantly remind, literally have to remind myself as the temptation grows and as our culture grows further and further and further away from the things of God, you have to keep reminding yourself, wait a minute, there's an enemy out there, man. There's like a legit enemy, uh, you know, that's out there that's against God and against God's uh, God's people. The one thing I tell people all the time when I talk to the little youngsters around me um, that I see as a calling on their life as well, the one thing that I tell them is the biggest thing that the enemy wants to do, the biggest thing that the devil wants to do is make God look like a liar. Is to make God look like, nah, that's what he, remember, if you go back to the garden, you know what I'm saying? What did, what did, the, what did he say to Eve? Oh, you surely will not die. Don't put your, where, where, where'd you get that from? You surely, will, you surely will not die. That's not true. Who told you that? The Lord told you that? You lying, right? That You can see that from the very beginning. That is what the, the enemy has come to do, is to actually get us away from what God has actually called us to. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a, y'all don't, it is such a spiritual battle. It is such a spiritual battle. And you won't know it until you walk it. This is some of the, that's just my opinion. That's some of the stuff I see in Darius because when I see this dude, everybody he's around, it don't have to even be women. Everybody he's around, he got something good to say. Everybody that he's around, he lifts up. He lifts up. It's, it, and, and that's because God, there's a world change on the inside of him, but the enemy also knows that. So I just want y'all to think about that when we come and you're judging these people for their personal lives, when you're not in it, you're, a lot of people, y'all don't, what else do y'all have on Darius besides his personal life? What else do you have? Nothing. 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 I told you, I can give you tape on tape on tape. I can give you, I mean, interview on interview on interview that you see stuff with the Urkel dude. Darius, if you take out his personal life, you don't have nothing on him. You take out his personal life, you can't say nothing bad about that dude. Matter of fact, my cousin, um, and this is all facts, no fiction. This is the truth. My cousin um, does music and I didn't even know that he went out there, but he went to California and all I know is he was in the studio. No lie, this is the truth. He was in the studio with uh, Darius. And so he posted the picture and stuff. I said, dude, like you met Darius? And my cousin said, I said, what was it like to meet him? And my cousin, my cousin said, man, that dude is so cool. It's like, if you didn't know he played Eddie Winslow, like if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. Like he's so cool. He's so chill. He's so humble, you know? And I, he was, I was like, you, you know, this was, this was years ago. So this was maybe, man, I want to say five, six years. I can't remember exactly. But I said, uh, not knowing now though. Right. But I asked him back then because he told me, he said, oh, I asked him, I asked him where Lowell was, you know, and I said, oh, snap. I said, you asked him where Lowell was. He said, yeah. I said, well, what did, what did Darius say? He said, um, he said, all he said was she doesn't live out here anymore. Now, me knowing that Darius is kind of protective of Kelly, <laughs> I'm looking at it so differently now. Like, bro, don't ask him that. Don't, don't, don't ask him that, bro. bro. He's like, but he's like, oh, you know, I asked him where Lowell Winslow was. Where's Lowell Winslow at? <laughs> where is she at? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, but Darius just said, oh, she, she doesn't live out here anymore. And so I thought that was really, that was, so I have, I actually, I have never met anybody in Family Matters, but I do have a cousin that actually met Darius and everything. He had nothing but good things to say about Darius. Nothing but good things to say about, about him. And I think the real ones, I think you know what it is. Like, I think if you have any level of discernment, you can see like Darius is a special dude. And that's why this stuff comes, this stuff comes at him because the enemy trying to shut him up. And you might be like, well, look at the stuff he talks about. Yeah, it's because he's ingrained in Hollywood and he's ingrained in all these things. You, you're seeing him from, from, you're seeing him for what he is. I'm seeing him through God's eyes. I just want to point that out. Like to me, I think very, very highly of Darius. I don't get into what goes on in his personal life. Cause you know what? I ain't there. Okay. I can only go off how I see, how he interacts with people, the interviews that he gives, see things through God's eyes. You got to see him through God's eyes. You got, you got to see him through God's heart. Sorry. I can't see him than any other way than God has shown me. This is a man who brings, I'm going to tell y'all right now, when I say, uh, when I say he's a world changer, trust me, Darius is doing it behind the scenes. He's just, y'all just don't see it. World ch changing the world. He's doing it behind the scenes. Y'all just don't see it because he don't post it. When he interact, I guarantee people that meet him, people that interact with him, people that run into him. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you guys what it is, but we look at it and we want to judge them for their personal lives. We want to judge them because what TMZ said, we want to judge them because of it. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, what I'm proud about when it comes to the Urkel dude, I didn't make my opinion on him based on what everybody else was saying. I would have made my opinion on him a long time ago because when, when I was young, I never heard good things about Jilla White. Never in my lifetime. Have I heard good things about him? And that's even why the show was still on, right? But I am proud of myself because my opinion based on him is what I saw from him, not no other person. So that's the one thing that I want to remind you of with that. And again, with me, I'm saying the same thing. No, I love Jaleel. Keep on loving him. Keep on. Absolutely. I am not here to try to change your mind on, on that. I'm just trying to open up. I'm just trying to help you to see something, you know? I told you, I'm not, a, I'm not for that cancel culture type of stuff. I'm not like, hey, I don't think highly of this guy, so you shouldn't either. No, go continue to support Jaleel. Go, go continue to do it. Go buy whatever he's selling, okay? Go be his number one fan. Yay! Go do that. But all I'm saying is, we try to cancel the ones that God has 
called. And how do you know? A lot of times it's by the temptations and or like, like Kel Mitchell said, right? The distractions that come your way. These things keep coming to try to knock Darius down. But because he's called and because he has people around him, because he has great character, I don't care what y'all say. A man that can see the beauty and the awesomeness and the greatness in another person and will speak it not only to them, but to the world. That's high character right there. That's what I'm saying. Darius, y'all can say what you want to say. Darius exudes high character because he don't get it right all the, way, all the time in his personal life. That ain't even really your business. That ain't, your, that, ain't, that ain't even your business. But you know the one thing that God showed me and I want to encourage him? God sees him as souls. Every single entertainer. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord. In the entertainment industry, famous people, okay? Probably your, fam your favorite actor, your favorite rapper, your favorite whatever are the most neglected when it comes to prayer. Because you're more about praising them and celebrating them than you are praying for them. And that's the thing that we have to understand. God cares. Remember, I'm going to bring it back to what I said. What did I say? I'm not worried about the situation because God cares about the soul. God cares about the soul. And what I want to encourage you in for, for you, if you pray, if you're a person who believes in prayer, if you're, you're a person who believes in God and you like this person over here and you like this person over there, pray for them. See, like for real from the heart, pray for them. God said, I'm trying to get to them, but there's not enough of you guys that are willing to pray because you're too amazed. You're too amazed. You're just so amazed or you're, you're so inspired. You want to be like them, you know, all those different things. Or maybe you're on the other side of it. You know, maybe you're trying to cancel them. You know, maybe, um, you know, you're, you, you despise them or you don't like them because of their personal life. All these things. God said, I need y'all to pray. I'm trying to get to people in the industry. I'm trying to reach these people in the industry. These are my children. These are my babies. These, I have prepared a place for them. Pray for them. Y'all want to cancel Darius. And y'all want to cancel Orlando Brown. And y'all want to give hate to even Kelly. But God got a purpose for them. God has handpicked and plucked them out specifically for his glory. Be amazed at the celebrity. Celebrate the celebrity. Absolutely. But if you really care about that celebrity, get on your knees and pray because God said they are the most rejected when it comes to prayer, meaning they get prayed for the least because we're too busy praising them to get on our knees and pray for them. Pray, 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 especially if you are a believer. I've seen so many believers. They're so in, they're so awestruck by by the, the entertainer. God can't even use them. Because you go from being used by God to wanting to be like the person that he's trying to reach. You feel what I'm saying? God cares about these people. From the Will Smiths to the Martin Lawrences to the Kelly Williams to the Candace Camerons to the Darius McQuarries to the Orlando Browns. God cares about them. Stop following people you don't like. Get a life. Stop following people that you don't like so you control and be mean. Get a life. I have never done that with, with the, the, the Urkel dude. I've never done it. I've never left him a mean message on his Instagram. I've never done it. Because really it ain't worth my time. You don't like somebody, it shouldn't be worth your time. Move on. Go and, go and appreciate the people you do like. You don't have to like everybody. As a Christian, I don't have to like everybody. I got to respect them. And you like this person, your favorite basketball player is Kyrie. Your favorite basketball player is Steph. LeBron, pray for them. Your favorite musician is, I don't know the musicians, y'all, because I, I really only listen to Christian music, but I know there's Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Snoop. You, you're, pray for them. Your, your social media person, I don't know, I, one of the people I really like is MKHD, does tech. Pray for them. God cares. Quit judging them off of their personal lives. Let's put your personal life on display. I have nothing else on Darius besides trying to bring up his personal life. But that's a great man right there. Will he ever turn completely over to the Lord? I don't know. But that's a great man right there. And that's why I just want to encourage, again, stop hating on Jaleel because he married a WW. And maybe let's deal with the real issue is that maybe the black woman is not being valued the way she should. But I'm just saying straight up and down all around. I appreciate everybody that, you know, every video that you watched or trying to be this YouTuber. That's why you never hear on any of my videos. Like, comment, subscribe, because I was never trying to do all that. I just wanted to go and, and just show you guys this beautiful love story of Stephen Laura. That's all I, you know, and show you how amazing and, and, and how, um, how amazing Laura Winslow is and how much she has impacted our lives and our, our lives for the good. That's all I ever wanted to do, man. Love God, love people. May God bless you. May God keep you. Mm -hmm.